This book is about Hodge. From Adam to Abraham. Hodge is more than a journey that is a ritual. Hodge is a way of living. This book is written by Safir Rob. Chapter 4 Ihram. Ihram is the state into which the pilgrim is required to put himself in during the occasion of Hajj or Umrah. Ihram comes from the word haram, which means prevention or forbidding. Ihram is the intention to perform Hajj or the intention to perform Umrah or an intention to perform both of them. Ihram is a directive from the human potential that guides the intention of the believer. The state of Ihram takes on all the basic human levels of a believer, spiritual, mental, and physical. Once a believer has made his intention, another process automatically takes over. This is the mental preparation before one embarks on the journey of Hajj. We must make sure that we make the proper provision for the Hajj. The mental provisions include the studying of the rights in this book and others, the acquisition of a visa, and the financial preparation with halal monies. These are just some of the aspects of the mental preparation. Ihram is also a physical dress. It is when the male pilgrim must wear two pieces of unseen cloth. One piece is worn around the waist. It is called the izar. And the other is an outer garment that covers the upper part of the body. It is called the rider. The female is permitted to wear and dress anything of her ordinary clothes. It is reported in Bukhari that Aisha stated, as regard to the women, they can wear their ordinary clothes. She also held that there was no harm if a woman pilgrim wore cloth dyed black or red or boots. She further held that a woman should not cover her face or wear a veil in Ihram. We think that it is important to point out that the female believers should select simple clothing. One of the objects of Ihram is to remove all distinctions of rank. In case of men, rank or station in the world is removed by having them all wear two seamless sheets. As for the women, they are required to give up their veil as they are considered a sign of rank. There are certain etiquettes one must observe before entering the state of Ihram. They include clipping the nails, trimming the mustache, shaving the hair from the armpits, shaving the pubic hairs, and making ablution, taking a complete bath. It is reported from Ibn Abbas, the Allah's Messenger said, A woman in a state of confinement after childbirth and one of the menstruation period must take a complete bath, declare her intentions, and perform all of the rites except the tawaf of the Kaaba, which she may perform after she is in a state of purification. Once the body is in a state of Ihram, one should make two rakahs. In the rakas, one should determine his intention to assume the complete state of Ihram. In the first rakah, one should cite Surah al kafirun In the second rakah, one should cite Surah al ikhlas Even Umar reported, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to offer two rakahs at Zul Salafah. When a believer makes his rakahs, 
and state his intention. It is important to know what type of Hajj he intends to make. There are three kinds. One is Kiran, the combination of both Hajj and Umrah. Two, Tamatu, the combination of both Hajj and Umrah with a break in between. And three, Ifrad, Hajj only. These three are directly related to the Hajj or the Umrah. There is a consensus among the scholars that all three kinds are legitimate. Aisha reported, We left Medina with Allah's Messenger to perform the farewell Hajj. Some of us declared to perform Umrah, while others declared their intentions to perform both Hajj and Umrah. Yet others declared their intentions to perform Hajj only. The Prophet, peace be upon him, declared for Hajj only. As far as those who intended Umrah, they terminated the Ihram as soon as they finished the rituals of Umrah. Those who intended to combine Hajj and Umrah, or those who intended to perform Hajj only, they did not terminate the Ihram until the slaughtering on the 10th of Dhul Hijra. Is there any harm in putting on Ihram without specifying its kind? It is documented in Fikr Sunnah that it is a person puts on Ihram with the intention of performing whatever Allah has prescribed for him without specifying any of the aforementioned three due to lack of knowledge. His ihram is quite lawful and valid. The scholars said, if such a person utters tabir like others with the intentions of performing the ritual of hard, but say nothing in words, nor make an intention in his heart, nor specifies whether it is tamatu, ifrat, or kiran, hard, that he intends his pilgrimage would still be valid, and he will be reckoned to have made one of the three kinds of Hajj. At this point, it is important to establish a few things that are permitted and a few things that are restricted in the state of Ihram. It is said that Ibn Abbas entered a public bath at al Jalfa, where he was in a state of Ihram. He was asked, how do you do so while in the state of Ihram? Ibn Abbas replied, Allah does not need any of our dirt and our filth. Jabir said, a person in the state of Ihram may take a bath and wash his garbs. Abdullah ibn Hanin reported, Ibn Abbas and our Masarur were our Iva when they disagreed on whether a person in the state of Ihram is permitted to wash his head. And Mishra differed and said that a Muslim is not allowed to wash his head. At this, Ibn Abbas sent me to Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. I found him bathing between two wooden posts of the well and was screened with a sheet of cloth. I greeted him, and he asked who I was. I replied, I'm Abdullah ibn Hanan, and I have been sent to you by Ibn Abbas to ask you how Allah's messenger used to bathe while in the state of Ikhram. At this, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari caught hold of the sheet of cloth, lowered it to his head, appeared before me, and then told somebody, to pour water on his head with his hands by bringing them from back to front and from front to back and said, I saw the prophet doing this. This is reported by the group except to Hamari. Bukhari added, then I came back and I told them and al Mushari said to Ibn Abbas, I will never again argue with you. This hadith shows that a Muslim, one that is in the state of Ikhram, is permitted to bathe. Ibn Abbas said, there is no harm if a Muslim wears a ring or a belt pocket 
to keep his money. There's another hadith that reported Ibn Abbas where he said, a person in the state of Ihram may wear coal if his eyes are sore, provided the coal is not perfumed. Aisha reported that the prophet said, five of the animals are vicious and they may be killed in the sacred precincts of the Haram. The crow, the scorpion, the mouse, the ravenous dog, and the snake. Some of the restrictions of Ihram include sexual intercourse, all matters that lead to it. One should not do anything that causes him or her to deviate from the path of Allah. We should not dispute, argue, or fight. Let there be no obscenity, nor wickedness, nor wrangling in the Hajj. Holy Quran 2, 197.